So with this one, you want to look at all that vocabulary in that unit two folder, right? These are opposite each other. So what do I have to check on this list since they're opposite each other? Vertical, 100%. So I've got a line here and a line here that intersect. And these two angles are 100% going to be vertical. Because they're vertical, what else are they? Congruent. Absolutely. Those are the two that you check on that one. And if you're looking in your vocabulary notebook, you want to look way down at the bottom. And this is where my computer starts getting sad with me. It's like page 15 or 16, I think. Not all the way to the constructions, but almost there. Yeah. So page 16 is where you want to look. And I would definitely be flipping back and forth between the notebook and the test when I'm doing this, okay? Make sure you use these, um, you know, notes. So then if we look at question three, what is the essential information we need here? By the way, in that question, in order to get it right, you need both and only both answers. Oh, come on, Schoology. There we go. So guys, so unfair that we have to do these construction questions because without a compass in your hand, they're tough. And I, I get it, I swear to you, I do. The SOL that we have to take at the end of the year, however, has lots of construction questions. So we've got to be able to figure out ways where we can remember what the compass does, which is essentially draw circles and use the vocabulary to eliminate the trashy answers, okay? So if I'm looking for an angle bisector, I'm looking for an angle that's been bisected. All of these kind of look like that. Then we gotta think about what constructions do. Constructions are used with compasses compasses, right? Or they're made with compasses and compasses make circles. These little arcs are only showing part of the circle. So you want the most complete construction that you can do. This choice is the most often chose wrong answer. What's the most complete right answer that's left over? Anybody got an idea? Yeah, for me, it's going to be this one. This one is going to be the best right answer. It's the most complete drawing. I know math space isn't working, but you can go in the digital notebook down in the constructions here. Just you do your best on these. I will curve the test a little bit um, because I know that we didn't get all the practice we wanted because math space is dumb, quite frankly. I have a hate-hate relationship with math space is not my favorite program at all. So with that being said, let's look over at number four. The so number four is also a construction question, but with this one, we actually can use our vocabulary to help us out. So we want a congruent segment, right? Where you cut the um, ray with the compass, that creates an end point. So which of these has two congruent segments? That's the question. So if I put an end point wherever that compass arc is, and I've got end points on the other sides, right? Which of those shows a congruent segment? Remember, congruent means exactly the same. So don't get distracted by anything else. Just look and see which one makes the most sense. This one doesn't even have a segment down here, so it can't possibly be A. So kind of take the words, take what you know about the vocabulary, and then um, kind of make it make sense. Is that helpful for those? Are there any other questions on part one that we want to talk about? Because I'm happy to talk about any of them that we have time to do. Anybody else have any questions? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Okay. I know this unit has been very rushed. Um, please know that I do have your back. I have your best interest at heart. I'm not trying to kill you. I'm just trying to get to the hard stuff. And believe it or not, this is not the hard stuff yet. There's a lot of vocabulary and a lot of foundational things that we need to know. 
It's a lot of information. It's just not super hard yet. It's just a lot of recall, which is like, I'm not trying to downplay anything. Um, question one and question 10 were really the only low questions on this one. So question one, I think um, what I saw was that people just weren't finishing the question. So come on, give me a pen. There we go. Welcome to everybody who's just joining us. Class does start at 11.10. So you want to try to get here at 11.10. I know that's a little bit of a change from last uh, week when we were still virtual. So if I've got JK and I've got KL, they look in this picture like they should be congruent. But these pieces are not marked. You can't set these equal to each other. If it said that JK was or JL was bisected, if the word bisect was in there, you could say that these two are equal. Because it doesn't say that, you can't do that. You need to do this left part plus this right part equals the total. Okay. So the equation is going to be 8x, and bear with me, I'm working with a touchpad here, plus 11. And then plus the other side, 14x. And if you have a piece of paper, I encourage you to write this down if you haven't already done this problem. Minus 1 equals the total. So equals 120. You're going to solve this equation. So you're going to combine your like terms, 8x and 14x. And you combine your numbers, the plus 11 and the minus 1. You're going to solve for x. You're going to get x equals something, right? x equals some number. I don't know what it is because you're going to solve the equation. Once you get that, there's a second part because I'm not asking for x. I'm asking for jk. So jk is this piece over here. Whatever you get for x, you've got to substitute it in. And you've got to do 8 times whatever x is plus 11. And that's going to be your final answer that you put in here for JK. Does that make sense? Help some folks out a little bit, hopefully. Yeah, okay. I will have office hours today again from 2 to 3. So if you have questions and you don't feel comfortable asking them now, putting them in the chat, just come to office hours and we'll talk about them there. Come on, Screencastify. It's like dealing with an old car. You've got to like talk to it. So I didn't see any really low questions between two and nine. Does any one person have anything? And you can either call it out, be brave and call it out, or put it in the chat. I'm looking at the chat. Otherwise, we'll just go straight to question 10. Anybody have any questions two through nine that they wanted to talk about? In the other class, question five and question nine are both low, but in your class, they weren't. Can you let me know? All right, let's go straight to question 10. If you change your mind, shout it out. The question 10, I think, is an angle bisector question. Remember, bisect means to cut in half. So whatever pieces you have, they need to be cut in half. And it's just being slow. Come on, little computer, go to question 10. All right. So if we look at question 10, and I'm sorry, it's not going to let me scroll here, but BC bisects ABD. So BC bisects ABD. That means this little angle on the top is congruent to this little angle on the bottom. That's what those little lines mean, okay? But then I've got something that's a little bit different down here. The measure of DBA, so if I connect D to B and B to A, that whole angle is 60. Okay. If you didn't do IXL C4, and this looks confusing to you, write down on a sheet of paper, do IXL C4. C4 was meant to help you with this. So if the whole thing is 60, then what's this little piece over here? 30, because it's been bisected. And this little piece over here is also 30. So there are a couple of equations that you can do, but you can use these two things. If this angle is 30 and it's 2x plus 20, you just set that equation up. 2x plus 20. Oops. 
equals 30. Okay, and in this question, always go back and look to see what it's actually asking. It's asking for X, so no need to substitute. Questions? Did we decide we wanted to go look at any other parts of part two, or are we good? Okay. All right, a lot of people not speaking up and not doing the work, so I'm very confused. I don't know how to help you if you don't talk to me. Then I'm going to close out of part two and look at part three. Part three, I want you to look back at your digital notebook for unit one. Okay. The unit one notebook, the best place to look is on pages 14, no, 11 and 12. Okay. The questions that most people miss, especially honor students, are these questions 11 and 12. And eventually my computer is going to catch up to my clicking. If I keep button mashing, it's not going to do anything. So detachment, contrapositive, and syllogism. If in the question it asks, is it a valid argument? If the word valid is there, these are your three options. I don't care what the pattern is if it's not one of these three patterns. There's only three valid patterns. And on page 12, that's kind of what we were trying to talk about. So on part three, six, seven, and nine that we needed to talk about. So question six. Come on, Schoology, question six. Question six is kind of a monster of a question. You're looking for which one of these does not have a valid conclusion. Oh my Lord. Okay, which one does not have a valid conclusion? There's only three ways to have valid conclusions. We can detach it. All of these are gonna start with P then Q. Okay, all of them are going to start P and Q. Detachment is going to separate them. I'm going to have the simple sentence P and then the simple sentence Q. Right, that's detachment. That's this guy over here. Then I have contrapositive where I take that same um, conditional statement, but I do Q first, but it's negated because contrapositive we switch and negate. And I've got P second and I negate it. Okay. So this is option one, this is detachment. This is option two, this is contrapositive. And then syllogism is that big one where we've got the three different things. We start PQ. And then we go QR, because we've got a different sentence. I look for nouns and verbs that are the same. The Q's cancel out and I'm left with P and R. So this is syllogism. These are our three valid patterns. So when you're asked about valid patterns, what is a valid conclusion? I don't care about truth. Okay, I want you to think like a lawyer. I don't care if it's true or not. I don't care if somebody's guilty or innocent. I care about whether they broke the law. Okay, so I care about whether these laws are holding up. So in this one, you want to diagram all the stuff. Let's start with this animal as a fish. So if an animal is a fish, I'm gonna make that P. And I strongly encourage you to label these. Then it lives in water. That's the end of the sentence, that's the Q. A shrimp lives in water. So the water is what's the same. Even though I've got a different noun up here, I've got water and water. So this is the Q. And then shrimp or fish. So I've got fish for the P and fish for the P. Don't let the extra words confuse you. Does that pattern follow one of our logic laws? Did we detach it? Did we switch it and negate it? Or is it not valid? Anybody? So I'm hearing somebody thinks it's C. If a parallelogram has four congruent sides, so I see four congruent sides, that's gonna be my P, then it's a rhombus. So that's a new thing. Rhombus is gonna be my Q. If a parallelogram is a square, so that's a new thing. 
that's my R. Then it has four congruent sides, then it has four congruent sides. That whole clause was my P. Right? So I have a P at the beginning and a P at the end. Those can cancel out. Then the hypothesis needs to come to the front. If a parallelogram is a square, that's the R. It came straight down, so that works. And the Q, it's a rhombus. That works too. So this one is valid. This is syllogism. You want to find which one is not valid, which one does not follow one of these patterns. Okay. Questions on that, guys? This is one of the hardest things to like really get solidified in your brain is the logic loss. So let's look at question seven. Question seven is the exact same thing. If a polygon has three sides, then it's a triangle. Here we're going to do biconditional. So actually it's not exactly the same thing. With biconditionals, remember you need if and only if in the middle. If and only if, and it has to go in the middle. Okay, so we're going to have whatever the P is, and then if and only if, and then the Q at the end. This is the biconditional pattern, and that's in your notebook too over here. Okay. So if this is the P and this is the Q, if it's a true definition, a true biconditional, we can rewrite it with the F and only F in the middle. Do we need to talk about that one anymore? I feel like if I talk about it anymore, I'm going to absolutely give you the answer. Okay, you guys are awfully quiet. I can only help if you give me feedback. I know everybody gets food in their belly and their brains get tired. Huh? Okay. Is this question nine? So question nine is where smart students get in trouble because you start thinking about truth, not valid. Okay. Please, 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 when you see valid conclusion, think logic laws. There's only three patterns and it has to follow one of them. It can be valid and not true. Okay. So if angles are vertical, that's P. Then they're congruent, that's Q. They are not vertical. Is that P, Q, not P or not Q? What is this part? The angles are vertical, then they're congruent. Those angles are not vertical. Is that P, Q, not P, or not Q? It is not P, 100%. Does that follow one of our patterns over here? Can I start with a not P? You cannot start with a not P. You can start with a regular P, and you can start with a not Q, but you cannot start this way. The inverse pattern is not valid. Okay. It is one of our patterns. It's the inverse. We've just negated. The most popular wrong answer is A. That is not the correct answer because inverse is not a valid pattern. Okay. Valid conclusions always go back to these three patterns. Okay. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen, that I can answer before we stop? So with linear pair, they need to be adjacent and they need to add up to 180 degrees. Linear pair, they need to be adjacent and they need to add up to 180 degrees. Questions on the difference between those? So vertical and linear pair should have been a review from last unit, hopefully. Vertical are gonna be congruent and linear pair are going to be supplementary. Do I need to zoom in? Can you guys see? Can you see? Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Just, just making sure. Just making sure. So let's go over to the right side. Alternate interior. If you had to give a guess, where would you put the alternate interior? Describe it to me. Where are you going to put alternate interior? Are they going to go inside or outside the parallel lines? Inside the parallel lines. And they're going to be on the same side or they're going to be on opposite sides? Opposite sides. Absolutely. So here you're going to end up with either two acute angles because if they're same side or they're opposite sides of the transversal, but both inside, right? Alternate interior, they're either going to both be acute or they're both going to be obtuse. Alternate interior, we're going to find out tomorrow, are always congruent. So over here under alternate interior, I would write always congruent. Okay, they are always congruent. And these little yellow boxes are places where you can put your mental notes. Like I can say things all day long, but you need to know how you're going to remember it. Okay? So either acute equals acute or obtuse equals obtuse. But they're inside the parallel lines, wherever the parallel lines are, and on opposite sides of the transversal. So alternate exterior is going to be the same thing, just on the outside, right? I can't run these guys over with my truck. So if I've got an acute angle on the top left, then I need an acute angle on the bottom right. Or I can do an obtuse angle on the top right and an obtuse angle on the bottom left, right? Alternate angles, you're going to have obtuse equals obtuse and acute equals acute. And we'll talk about those more tomorrow. Okay. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy? <laughs> it will get harder. I know. It always does. So I am going to zoom in here um, so that it's easier for you guys, hopefully, to see. Um, and I will figure out how to make my toolbars work here. All right. Um, so if we're just looking for alternate interior angles, I've got two choices. What are my two choices for alternate interior angles? If I say three, what's alternate interior to three? Six, absolutely. So in here, you're going to write three equals six. That's going to help you remember that obtuse equals obtuse. And then my other option is four and five. So also write four equals five. Okay. And you've got some dots at the bottom that you can drag up there. It's just hard for me to do that because I've got like one screen here. So if you want to go back and drag the dots for homework and make the notebook more complete and make it kind of color coded, those dots should be draggable so you can move them. If that's frustrating to you, then don't do it. Like sometimes people drag them and they just grow to these humongous circles instead of the little tiny dots. Okay. So alternate interior, three equals six and four equals five. What about alternate exterior? What are my two options there? I heard one was one and eight. Absolutely. So we're going to do one equals eight. And what's my other pair? Two and seven, hundred percent. Two equals seven. Okay. So if remember, alternate means opposite sides of the transversal, and interior and exterior means relative to the parallel lines. So if we come down here to same side, another word for that is consecutive. We've kind of scrubbed away the word consecutive, but sometimes it is seen. Same side of the transversal, interior of the angles. What two angles am I talking about? Four and six for sure. Here, instead of writing four equals six, I want you to write four plus six equals 180. 
even though that doesn't make a whole lot of mathematical sense, it's really the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle six equals 180. Hopefully that shorthand will help a little bit. What's my other pair of same side interior angles? I've got four and six and three and five. Yes, sir. So we could do the same thing here. Three plus five equals 180. I've got one acute and one obtuse angle. One acute and one obtuse angle. When they're different angles, they're going to add up to 180 degrees. When they're the same, they're going to equal each other. So just like with um, complementary and supplementary angles, when we go to set up equations tomorrow, we're either going to set them equal to each other or equal to 180. Those are going to be our two choices. Okay. How about same side consecutive exterior? What am I talking about there? Two and eight for sure. And are those equal to each other or equal to 180? Two plus eight equals 180. Because I've got one obtuse angle up here that's bigger than 90 and one acute angle down here. Same side are always going to be supplementary. Same side supplementary, that 180. So two plus eight equals 180. And that just takes a minute. What's my other pair of same side exterior angles? Feel free to shout out. I love hearing voices, especially now that I can see faces. It's my other pair. So if I've got two and eight, I also need one and seven. Yeah, so we're same side of the transversal and exterior of the parallel line. So remember, my truck is driving down this road. I can't run over the one and the two and the seven and the eight. So the same side, the west side is one and seven, one plus seven are going to equal 180. Okay. Last one is the most confusing. Okay. Corresponding angles, we've saved the best for last. Corresponding is the most confusing. Corresponding is on the same side. One's inside and one's outside. Okay. So corresponding is going to stay in the same relative location, but be in a new intersection. So if I start with one, I'm going to go to five. So one is equal to five. What's another pair of corresponding angles? Because there are four of them. Eight and four. Eight and four for sure. I heard that one first. Oops. And that should be an equals, not a plus. Eight equals four. And then I heard somebody say two. What corresponds to two? Two and six, hundred percent. So two is going to equal six. And what's my last pair of corresponding angles? You guys are killing it. Three and seven. Three equals seven. There's probably not enough room to write all of those, but I need you to know that there are four sets of corresponding angles. It's almost like a slide. I take one and I slide it down the transversal and it lands on five. Or I take eight and I slide it up the transversal and it lands on spot four. And sometimes literally when the drawings get confusing, I take my hands and I'm like, okay, that is angle one and where does it travel? Right? Don't think you're weird if you do that because I do it all day, all the day long. Although I guess some people think I'm weird. So Let's look over at these practical problems and see if we can make kind of a little more real sense out of this. So this is Princess Anne Road, Kempsville Road, and Indian River Road. Not drawn to scale. I'm not a very good scale drawer. This is Miss Kelly's Jeep. Well, it's her old Jeep. She's got a new one now. But that's a whole other story for another day. Which street represents the transversal? What do I write in here? What's the transversal in that picture? Kempsville Road. Absolutely. Type in Kempsville Road right there. Kempsville Road is the transversal that connects Princess Anne and Indian River. You cannot get from Princess Anne to Indian River without connecting somehow. Okay, they're parallel streets. Well, they're kind of parallel streets. So in this first box, in box one, you want to type in Kempsville Road. Because we've got these arrows, and remember those arrows mean they're parallel, 
Which angles are on the interior? Mm -hmm. Which angles are on the interior of Princess Anne and Indian River? Two, seven, three, and six. Two, seven, three, and six are on the interior. So two, seven, three, and six. Two, seven, three, and six are on the interior. Interior, right here. That's where my car drives in between, right? The analogy kind of stops working when we're talking about streets and the streets are lines instead of, you know, it doesn't work 100%. But. And this was Kempsville, right? What angles are on the exterior? One, eight, four, five. One, eight, four and five. Absolutely. One, eight, four. And I forgot to write eight. Okay. One and five are what um, angle pair? One and five represent what? Alternate exterior. Absolutely, Brendan. One and five are alternate exterior. They're on the outside. So in theory, this box will move. Um, alternate exterior, and you should be able to move the box right there. And then two and seven, what did two and seven show as an example? Two and seven. Two and seven. That's one of the ones from last unit. They're in the same intersection. They're adjacent. They are a linear pair. They add up to 180 degrees. So two and seven are a linear pair. That's your answer for number five. Two and seven are a linear pair. Okay, so hopefully you're all doing this in your notebook. What about four and six? Four and six. What's that an example of? Vertical, 100%. Those are vertical. Four and six, also in the same intersection, they are vertical. So circle it, mark it, highlight it, drag the box onto it, whatever you need to do to make sure that you know that four and six are a pair of vertical angles. Okay. What about eight and six? Eight and six. So they're on the same side. One's outside, one's inside. What's that called? Eight and six. So eight and six. They're definitely same side. Are they same side interior? No, because the eight's on the outside. Are they same side exterior? No, because six is on the inside. So what do they have to be? Corresponding, 100%. Okay, that's the tricky one, the corresponding, because it doesn't really follow uh, the pattern. Which angle would be same side interior with three? Same side interior with three. Same side interior with three is two. Yep. Yeah. And then what's the last question? Oh, there's not the last question. Which angle would be corresponding to four? So which one is corresponding to four? Yes, 100%. So if I slide four up that transversal, it's going to land right on two. Let's see if we can do one last thing here and fill in some of these numbers. So if angle six is 119, let's see if we can fill in all of the other things. If angle six is 119, angle six is one, did it say 119 or 116? 19, thank you. What other angles are 119? Which one? Eight, yes. So six slides up the transversal to eight. So eight is also 119. What else is 119? Vertical angles are congruent. So two is 119. And what else? I've got vertical angles here. Yeah, four. I heard it simultaneously online and in the classroom. I love it when that works out. 
Guys, these are all obtuse angles. Okay. One of anybody play tic tac toe? Has ever played tic tac toe when you're bored or little? Sometimes what I do is I put a circle everywhere there's an obtuse angle. Sometimes the obtuse angles are easier to see than others, right? Every obtuse angle is going to be congruent as long as it's a pair of parallel lines with a transversal in between, okay? We're going to get some things that have more lines in it, and then this gets a little complicated. If you put X's in all of the other angles, those are all going to be acute. Those are also all going to be exactly the same size. How do we figure out what all of our X's are if we know the O's are 119? They do equal 180, Tatiana. Why do they equal 180? Um, that's, that's good enough for me. So are 1 and 8 a linear pair? They make a straight line. If I just look at 1 and 8, I've got a straight line for that um, Princess Anne Road. I've got just this piece of Kemsville Road. I've got 119 over here. They make a linear pair, so they should add up to 180 degrees. That's the trick with linear pairs. If they make a straight line, they add up to 180 every time. So if I know the right side is 119, I can just do 180 minus 119, which gives me, somebody help me with the mental math, is that 61? Awesome. So every single one of those blue X's is going to be 61 degrees. Okay. Yeah. In my head. So 119 is almost 120. 180 minus 120 is 60. Yeah. I got a calculator sitting right here. I got a computer with a calculator sitting right here. And I got a phone sitting right here that also has a couple calculator apps on it. So don't feel some kind of way about pulling out a calculator and doing that. Just because I can do some of it in my head, I will always ask for confirmation because a lot of times I try to do the mental math in my head and for whatever reason I have a little brain fart and it doesn't work out right. So let's keep each other honest and kind of check each other out, okay? Any questions about that?